Hello again and welcome to part two of this video series on how to build your own BB-8. Well, in this video I'd like to talk to you about how to design your own drive system for your BB-8. Uh, in the last video I talked about all the different options that you've got about how you're going to build it and drive it. Um, now, if you've chosen to go the full 3D printed route and using an existing drive system, uh, then there's no point in really following this build series because you might as well just go to the BB-8 Builders Club, look at what other people have done and copy them because that's essentially what you'll be doing. What I want to talk about is how to design your own uh, drive system. And um, for me, the reason I chose to do that was because it was cheaper, uh, substantially cheaper, and um, it meant that I could um, sort of limit the drive system functionality to what I wanted it to be able to do rather than having an all singing, all dancing BB-8 that, uh, that cost a lot of money. So um, why don't I just show you the inside of what BB-8 looks like and then perhaps after that I'll give you a demo of the um, CAD design and the CAD software that I used and explain sort of how I went about designing that drive system. His closure mechanism is a couple of screws here and um, every, all the hardware on him is um, stainless steel because um, that way it doesn't react with the uh, magnets for his, um, that keeps his head attached. So once the screws are out, I've got three um, stainless steel pins that just pin this hatch in place and then the whole hatch just comes off. Ba boom And then you can see his drive system inside. Let's give you a closer look, eh? Uh, this white part here is the head control arm. And that's powered by these two servos here, or it's um, moved by those two servos there that just tilt it um, backwards and forwards. And then in the middle of it, you've got the head rotation servo that when you turn that, you can see his head spins. So the, how that works is there's a large magnet array up on the underneath there that, um, that turns around when that servo turns and there's a corresponding magnet array that you can just about see there that the um, the dome spins on. So they're not actually touching each other but um, they run very close to the outside of the sphere. So some other components that are easy to see here are these main drive motors. There's um, one either side and those connect via these hubs to the outside of the sphere to drive it. Um, down here, that red circuit board is the amplifier for the speaker, and right here is the speaker. Then this um, large heat sink that you can see here with the blue circuit board is one of the motor drivers um, that power, one powers the main drive motor and one powers the pendulum side to side motor. And speaking of the pendulum side to side motor, you can just see that lurking at the back there, that. Um, that metal cylinder is actually the same kind of motor as this, so you can kind of see it back there. That other circuit board with the digital display on is a voltage regulator to supply 9 volts to the Arduinos, which actually sit um, on the other side. You can't see them very easily, but um, there there's one lying down and there's one on its side. And the one on its side has a red shield which is the mp3 shield for the sounds and the one that's lying down there has a blue shield on top of it which is the usb shield so um lurking there you can see a green a green gear um which is got a toothed belt on it that is the uh, potentiometer that measures what position the side to side pendulum is in so that it can give feedback um, that red circle there is one of the bearings that the whole pendulum arrangement can move on. I'll just try and sort of move it by hand a little bit. It doesn't move very much because it's obviously not powered up at the moment, but that pendulum goes from side to side like that. And then this whole main drive mechanism can rock backwards and forwards like this. And that's pretty much all you can see. There is a second, um, there's a second motor driver there, which you can only just see. You can barely see it at all. But um, I think 
I think what we'll do at some point is um, I'll actually just pull the whole drive mechanism out so that you can have a good look at it um, 360 degrees and maybe power, I'll power it up so that uh, you can see how it operates as well what it looks like when it's moving all right so this is the CAD um, I use a program called Autodesk 123D um, this program's actually been superseded since by Fusion 360 but Fusion 360 also charges a subscription unless you're in an educational facility which I'm not and Autodesk 123D was free so I'm sticking with this one um, also please excuse my um, rather uh, makeshift screen cap um, setup my laptop is not powerful enough to run this software and run the screen cap software at the same time so I've just got my camera sat in front of the computer anyway um, this is the CAD um, one of the first things that you are going to want to do and the first thing that I did as well is decide on two things and these are your two major components for the build the two biggest components and one of them is what you're going to use for your motors um, probably your main drive motors and also um, if you're using a pendulum side to side then the pendulum side to side as well and also what you're going to use for your batteries um, those are probably the biggest costs involved and they're also going to be the biggest units so everything else that you do is going to be based around those now in my um, system I chose to use one of these this is a Mazda electric window motor the reason I chose this was because I already had one um, I had one lying around in the garage from when I replaced a door on my car a while ago because it got rusty I kept all the electrics from it including this motor now one of the useful things about this motor is it has um, a gearbox already built into it. it's worm reduction drive so you can see the motor is here and then just here there's a worm gear and then a large pinion gear and then another large pinion gear here another useful feature is this big cog that's um, fitted onto the shaft and that means that you can very easily use a 3d printed hub that's or anything really that um, cast and molded one to fit over that gear and you'll get a very uh, strong very robust connection between the motor and the main drive of your BB-8. Um, the other thing about these sorts of motors, particularly uh, car motors, is they're quite cheap to get hold of. If you're willing to jump down the scrapyard with a screwdriver and a spanner in your hand, you can pick a couple of these up for not very much money at all. Um, these have just about the right rotation speed as well, um, and they're 12 volts. And 12 volts is quite a useful voltage to use because many other things that you'll be using um, to power the electrics of your BB-8 will probably be 12 volts as well for instance in mine um, the amplifier is 12 volts and so is one of the other audio units as well so the next thing that I had to decide on was the battery and I already had a pair of these things um, these are sealed lead acid batteries um, I actually had 6 volt ones I had two 6 volt ones so I wired them in series to make 12 volts uh, if I was just buying batteries, I'd probably go for LiPos. Um, they're a lot smaller and they're a little bit gruntier as well. But um, these things, which are sealed lead acid batteries, SLA batteries, are probably good enough. Um, now, what that meant was that because these batteries were so chunky, the first thing that I had to do was try and mount them as low down as possible in the drive. Normally, it's not too much of an issue where you put LiPos because they don't weigh all that much. But... As you can see, I had to put these sealed lead acid batteries right down in the bottom here. And it also meant that the main drive motors had to be up at the top, um, right next to where the hubs were, because I couldn't really have them driven with a pinion or anything like that. So the first thing that I did was design the hubs. And I'll um, just bring up one of the hubs in close up for you now. So this is the drive hub. Uh, it's in two main parts. The first part is this part here, which um, is permanently fixed to the inside of the sphere um, with screws. I think there's four screws that I'd use to hold it on. The uh, second main part is this part here, which is the part, this green part, which um, attaches to the pinion and the cog on the main drive motors. Um, and then there's these yellow parts here, which are like keys and they're used to join these two things together. So basically this green part stays attached to the motor um, and this blue part stays attached to the sphere. So when I 
put the uh, main drive mechanism, I slide this green part over this, and then these keys um, slot in and engage the two halves together, and then there are two screws that follow the plane of these blue rods that hold the yellow part into the green part and basically attach it all together. Well, after I'd modeled the hubs, I also modeled the actual main drive motors in this CAD as well, just by measuring them and creating sort of blocks that were the right size. And from that, I managed to sort of work out um, what kind of bracket I'd need to um, hold those onto the main drive or the rest of the main drive. So this bit here is the electric window motor. And then I designed this part here to be 3D printed which attaches it to this ring of wood. And that was basically where I started. So I started with the two hubs, the main drive motors, and then these brackets to attach it to the main, I called it a toilet seat because I think it looks a bit like a toilet seat, but call it what you like. Um, one of the next things that I did was actually model the sphere. Now this is really useful because what it means is you can basically tell at all times whether your drive is gonna fit inside the sphere and also I modelled the access hatch to make sure that I could always um, get the drive in and out of the sphere um, without worrying about any part of it being too big. For the stuff that I'm um, not 3D printing, I still modelled it in CAD because I wanted to be able to see how everything else lined up and attached. And I think that's quite important when you're making your own drive system, otherwise you're going to be constantly making things and adjusting them and then having to redo them when they don't work. Um, doing it this way meant that I could make a lot of the mistakes in CAD first before I um, before I made them in real life. Right, I've probably waffled on for long enough in this video. I did want to get the drive out of him and um, show you around that, but I don't want these videos to be um, too much talking and not enough action, so uh, I think I'll end this one here and in the next video um, we'll look at how this guy rolls around.